Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now. I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger of the Dragon's Den. I'm one of the hosts between Taramina's on one TV. Of course, um, the OAA um, football season is is for sure now gone. It's done. I mean, like Clarkson, of course, repeats as Division One state champions. We're also going to go over girls' basketball previews coming up as well. Of course, first girls' games start here on the Monday here on the first as they as um as not a lot of OA teams play. I mean, like I know there's a lot, some games on Tuesday. Looking at Adams and um Oxford's one of those games to keep an eye on along with West Bloomfield and Clarkston. Even though I think that's going to be a mismatch right there, but um, but let's go to football first. Recapping the year, no doubt um. Uh, another successful year for Clarkston, um, winning the beating Celine thirty three twenty five. Of course, um, had a huge game from um, DJ Zulu, their quarterback Nolan Erickson, a junior running back, is gonna be back next year. Um, when you look at Clarkston, I thought in that game there was one play that I thought changed the whole complexion of that game, and it was Celine having a chance to go out there, kick a field goal, you know, having a chance in that one. You know, they would have been. It would have been close, you know what I mean, but they missed the twenty-five foot, um, twenty-five yard field goal, and um, and it led, and the next time down the field, Clarkson goes, goes about eighty yards on a drive for a touchdown. Of course, that led to a Zazula touchdown, and um, for Clarkston, it's a huge, huge um, win to repeat as state champions. Um, when you look at the Wolves this year, of course, um. You know, they start off the year number one in the state um, with Clarkston. I mean, like, um, I thought personally that when I look at the two teams that Clarkston did, you know, the one I thought two years ago, of course, um, that that team I thought was very – when Ian Erickson was on that team, that was a very, very good team. And then I thought this year, of course, Clarkson had to, had to clean up some pieces. They had to – I think – I thought that this road for Clarkson was much tougher – than the road they had in, in um in in thirteen when they won their first state title. Um, when you look at Clarkston, um, when you look at a lot of people are gonna say, I don't understand why you would have to retire numbers. You know what I mean? Like in Clarkston history, of course, um, they'll probably will do it with DJ Zazula's number. I just don't understand why why you retire players' numbers. You know what I mean? Especially you know, when you have a big program like Clarkson that has and um, you're retiring numbers, that's a little bit odd. But, you know, it's also it's kind of surprising now that Clarkson now has the longest winning streak in the state. You know, Ithaca, of course, was beat in the Division Five state final by um, Monroe St. Mary Catholic Central. Um, another thing that was odd, of course, was there were seven, divi- seven of the eight teams that won state championships we're public, we're private schools, you know, Orchard Lake St. Mary's private school, Warren D. South, a public school, a private school. I mean, like those seven of eight teams were private schools that won state titles. And, um, you know, I don't know if that increases the public versus private school debate. The only public school team that won a state title was Clarkston. And then you look at the Wolves, especially, um, with this year's team, you know, they had to, um, you know, the game, I thought the one of their best wins, I think, was West Bloomfield early in the year when they knocked them off 55-41. You know, that was an incredible game for um for Clarkston to win that one. And then, of course, you know, you know they went in, they rolled through people, of course. I didn't expect them to roll through Lake Orion the way they did last this year, 42-7. But I just think it was more of Lake Orion that had the problems in that one than it was with Clarkston. But Clarkston, you know, they proved to be a very, very – good team this year. I mean, like, you know, Cole Chewins is going to be going on the Miami of Ohio. You know, you got Adam, you got Nick Matt, you got Adam Attic next year is going to be, um, he's going to be a good lineman. Um, but I'm also surprised that not a lot of them <laughs> schools are looking at DJ Zazula. You know, he's a good decision maker. Kind of reminds me of that Sean Charette type of player. You know, he's got that leadership role, you know, that mentality, you know, he can run the ball, he can throw the ball. Um, you know, but am I going to say he's a better athlete than Charette? No, but, but you know, but I wouldn't not surprise me if um, Zazula goes to a um, 
Division One school, it's kind of surprising that he's not getting a lot of offers to go to Division One schools. But when you look at next year for Clarkston, um, of course, I know there's been a lot of talk about three P. You know that they could three P. Is it possible they could repeat? You know, it's possible, but but there's a huge but for Clarkston. You know what I mean? The schedule. You know, when you look at the schedule next year with Clarkston, um, the Wolves, they got to play at Macomb, Dakota week one, and that's going to be a tough test. When you look at in that situation right there, um, you know, of course, they won 24-21 over the Cougars this year. That was a huge win for that team. But going to Dakota is a different animal than it is hosting Dakota. When you have to play a team like Macomb, Dakota, and you're in their and you're in their place. It's it's tough. It's very difficult for 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 a team to go in there and win, you know. And Clarkson's replacing a lot of starters. They they got to replace the tight end. They're still gonna have Nolan Erickson back. Now this gives me the question. Of course, what Clarkson is, you know, they replace the quarterback. They're gonna rely a lot more on Erickson to run the ball. You know, it basically could be a very similar situation with Clarkson in 2012. And everybody knew what happened in 2012 was Clarkson relied a lot on running the ball, and they also relied on him. They had a strong running attack, and Nolan Eric and Ian Erickson, of course, his brother Nolan plays on the um, is now playing. You know, Ian Erickson now is at Eastern Michigan, but but with Clarkson, you know, the question's always going to be that passing game. You know. They had a very strong passing game last year, and I mean, like this year, and also last year, 2012, it wasn't even existent, you know. So you got to also give credit to DJ Zazula's um, mechanics in the off season that year that he developed the passing attack, and then um, you know, that really got Clarkson off the map, off the get go was um, was that um passing attack, and that really balanced out the run and pass for Kirk. For Kurt, for Coach Kurt Richardson's Wolves, you know, and also um George per- Port's son and a brother's also he's the off the coordinator over there at Clarkston, you know, you got to give him credit over there too for um having the confidence in Zazula, and um you know it would not surprise me if he goes D one or not, but back to the schedule for next year for Clarkston, of course um <laughs> when looking at that schedule next year, of course it's very manageable. I mean, they'll be favored, I think, in some of the eight games, you know, but I feel like four of those games are going to be very, very tough. Um, when you look at the games, I think they're going to be, they're going to give Clarkson problems. I think, um, of course, that week one game at Dakota, Dakota, that's going to be a huge, huge problem because when you look at that game, Macomb, Dakota's JV team was absolutely dynamic. They went undefeated this year. Um, they went and destroyed Clarkson, basically, um, like and they were like a mini college, and I've heard a lot of sources telling me that that this team, that that Dakota team is going to be very stacked. They're going to be loaded next year, and that is a frightening stat, you know. And then you're looking at at a Dakota playing Clarkston week one, <coughs> excuse me, and um, that's not going to be an easy matchup right there off the get go. I mean, like I can see. In that game, you know, I think the environment and the traffic is going to be a huge problem over there um, with Clarkston. I mean, like, I just think in the end, I think in that one, it'll be, it, it's early, you know, it'll be it's super, super duper early, you know. I mean, Clarkston's probably going to have their Christmas Day parade celebrating with state titles back-to-back years, you know. But, um, but... It's gonna be much harder from the three P. I think it start I think that twenty seven game losing that winning streak's gonna get snapped early week one. I think Macomb Dakota has got the best chance of snapping that streak and knocking off Clarkston. The next game I I have concerns for Clarkston will be the West Movie game. I mean be, and that's a road game for them. You know, West Movie's gonna be a little bit down. The loss of Eddie Wilson and Michael King are gonna hurt this team. They still got CJ Mosley and them Trishan Jackson. Those two guys, I think, are going to be difference makers. And, of course, you know, Clarkson's defense is going to be a little bit weaker than um, than than this year, than last year's. Um, of course, um, that's a game I think I can see. And also it's a game at West Bloomfield, and that Laker Nation is going to be very, very hostile, I think, to the Wolves, and especially that 
West Bloomfield can believe believes they can play with Clarkson. And I think that's another game I think it's going to give them problems. The third game, of course, I think it's going to give them problems, the Lake Orion game. You know, Lake Orion, I know they're a team on a mission, especially what happened this year. Um, didn't make the playoffs for the first time since 2000. Um, it hurts right now. I mean, like, you know, but I feel like when you look at this game, it's a rivalry game. Um, it hasn't been la- in recently. The last time the Dragons have beaten the Wolves, of course, was in 2010. You know, and of course, that was the year that Lake Orion won the state championship. I mean, like, Clarkston has um, won, in the, has won three, three of the last four meetings. And Lake Orion has not beaten Clarkston since, on the road since 2007. That's tough. You know, that's unfortunate. And, and um, I still feel like Lake Orion's going to be a better team that, uh, next I mean, like, next year. But the question for them, the jury's still out. Is this defense going to be improved or not? You know, I thought last year Lake Orion had some key injuries, of course, um, last season. I mean, like, when you lose two guys like Michael Jarvis and um, Drew Casey, that creates a huge gap in your gap in there. I just think they had a lot of defensive guys play out of position. And also, can the Dragons open it up? You know, they got to stop being predictable. And that was a huge problem this year for this team. When you rely a lot on the run, you know, it's not going to end up going well. And I think that's a huge problem that Lake Orion had. Now, when I look at the game of Clarkston, I think this group can definitely give them problems. You know, especially heading into that matchup with the, um, it's a tough matchup, yeah, because Clarkson always plays well at home. But I just think when you look at that game, I just think that those guys are going to be motivated for that game. They should be after the psyche. I'm not sure where the psyche and the mindset of the, of the Dragons, that's the question. But um, when you look at Clarkston, um, it'll be an interesting game. I think it's going to be a much closer game than it was this year at Lake Orion um, when Lake Orion and Clarkson play next year. And um, also, the next game I think is going to give Clark some problems is going to be the crossover. I think when you look at the crossover game, of course, if it's, I expect Clarkson to be ranked really high, of course, then you're going to be dealing with a team like Adams, Southfield, or Harrison. Of course, um, those three teams are going to be dangerous right there, and you're going to get one of those three teams. And I feel like the Wolves are going to be a very interesting team, you know, when you look at the crossover game, um, I just think when looking at that game, um, if it's it three, the, those three teams are going to give you different problems, different aspects. I mean, if it's Adams, you're dealing with the viewer option. Um, if it's Southfield, then you're going to be dealing with a heck of an athletic team, well coached team, of course, coached by Gary Teasley. And then you got Harrison, of course, Javon Shaw's back, and you got to deal with legendary coach John Harrington. Of course, Harrison almost beat Clarkston last year, this year. They almost beat him. And unfortunately, it, it, it didn't go over well for the Hawks. And, um, you know, Harrison went on that incredible run until they lost to Muskegon Mona Shores. I mean, but I think Harrison could give Clarkson a lot of problems. I also forgot to mention Oxford. The Wildcats, of course, they run that Pound the Rock scheme. But the problem I see with the Wildcats, they got to go to Clarkston and you know, they replaced Glacier Wallington. Their JV team, however, was not bad, you know, when you look at it. But I'm not sure if they match up well with the Clarkson type of team, you know. But they could slow it down, pound the rock scheme. You know, if they do that, you know, who knows. But I was kind of surprised that last year, that this year, that Clarkson just went into into Oxford and just torched the Wildcats, basically. They just, they just manhandled them on the blue turf. And... That's what on their homecoming, and that was that's kind of a shock right there when you look at it. I mean, <coughs> I mean, also we got some, and of course when you look at when I look at Clarkson's projection next year, I think Clarkson's a playoff team. You know, I think they are. Do I think they're going to repeat three peat? I don't think so. I mean, you got a lot of good teams down in Division One is still going to be good. Celine, of course, the team they beat thirty three twenty five. Um, they're still good. They have a quarterback. They have, they have Josh Jackson back. He's a good quarterback, good stud. And then you got to deal with, um, of course, you, in the west side of the state. I'm really haven't been sold on that side of the state. 
you know, ever since they started moving a team, moving Clarkson out west, I feel like besides the game in 2012, I think the Wolves have had a lot of success against the West Side State West Side teams. And of course, they went and played East Kentwood, and he just whooped them pretty bad. And that's what happened, I thought, when Clarkson went in there and just basically, Jay just went in there and into into him Howell and just destroyed him. They just went in there in no in the bright sorry and they went in there and destroyed him. I mean you got to give them, you know they went up twenty one nothing and you, got, you just got to look at it here from that perspective. But I really look at Clarkson maybe an eight and one or seven and two team next year. Um, like I said they'll be favoring seven of their eight games. Um, no, and eight of the first eight of the next nine games. Um, you know, they're going to have, they have the crossover at home. They have Orion at home. That game at Macomb, Dakota is going to be tricky. But when you look at the Wolves, I think that, you know, and you got, and you're relying a lot on Nolan Erickson. You got a very good receiver, the outside too. But a lot, but you know, when you look at it here, you don't have the true tight end like Chewins did, you know, but and their defense is a little bit weaker, I think, than in years past next year. But the schedule, but it all depends on that first week one test when they go to Macomb, Dakota to take on the Cougars. And that's not going to be an easy game either. So I'm looking at 7-2. and two. They'll be a playoff team, I think, this year. Um, ooh, it looks like we got some breaking news also here. Um, Farmington, of course, now moving up from the blue to the white next year, which I think they should have been in all along. Farmington, of course, won the blue. Um, when you look at the Falcons, it's a huge, um, they're, I'm kind of upset when you look at with Farmington moving up because if they would have moved up this year, they would not have played, they would have had to play. I don't think they would have made the playoffs, you know what I mean? Because you would have had the Adams, Southfield, Harrison, Oak Park, you know, and then you look at the league next year, you know, Oak Park's going to be a little bit down, um, but you're still going to have Adams, Harrison, and Southfield. They're going to be very, very good teams. I think Oak Park and Farmington's going to be a battle to the end. I just think when you look at that game, you know, next year, I just think that right now, um, when you look at it, Farmington would look at right now, I think it's the fourth best team in the OA White but next year. But, you know, that's good. If they, and I, I don't think Farmington makes the playoffs next year. I really don't. Because I see him, I see him losing to Harrison, Adams, Southfield, and if they and if they and if they get in, the, in that crossover game, if they get a team name O X F O R D, that is a L O S S, because you know Bud Riley and that Wildcat team is going to pound the rock. You know I don't like Farmington against the top four teams in the league in the red next year, and they play in that crossover, whether it be Clarkston. Orion, Oxford, or West Bloomfield. Heck, I don't even like when they play. If they play Stony Creek, you know what I mean. Stony Creek, of course, they're a team that's not that's gonna be. They'll be up there, but um, I still think that um, that farming. I don't think next year Farmington is gonna be the team that makes the playoffs next year. Um, you know, but um, if they do, it'll be a huge shock. But they're still gonna have some good players back in Desmond Kirkpatrick and David Reese. But the problem is, you know, you're playing in a tough division. It's gonna be it's going to be much tougher, you know what I mean? They'll have some experience, but that schedule is going to be very, very rocky. But And then I find out who they play week one is Royal Oak. That's a win. That's a win. Royal Oak drop it down from the blue um, that, to the blue to the white. That should have happened a long time ago. You know, that sh Royal Oak should have been the blue this season, not in the white. I mean, like, you just left Royal Oak out to dry last year. And who and I feel bad for those seniors who had to play. I just feel really bad for those seniors. My God. Okay, now all right, now when we come back, of course, we're gonna talk about um girls basketball. Of course, um they start up this week here on Away Now. We want a habitat home. I love working on my habitat home. Soy dueño de una casa de habitat. My neighbor is a habitat homeowner. Being a habitat homeowner has changed our lives. My mortgage payment for habitat is less than what I paid for rent. 
Habitat for Humanity of Oakland County currently has homes available with mortgage payments lower than most rent payments. If you or someone you know needs decent and affordable housing, call 248-338-1843 or visit our website at habitatoakland.org. Welcome back to ON Now. I'm Sammy Termina, blogger of the Dragon's Den and one of the hosts of Between Terminas on ON TV. Of course, um, speaking of, we got girls basketball this week. Um, of course, I'm starting off with um, there's some games out in the state. Of course, they're playing tonight. Of course, um, out of the league, of course, you got Linden playing Lake Fetton. That ought to be an interesting game. Um, Linden, of course, very good team. Of course, they see Lake Orion on um, Tuesday in the Dragon's Den, so that ought to be an interesting game. But um, you look at the league, you look at the um, at girls' basketball this year, it's a very unique league. Um, this year they're going more of a four sixes, um, which is kind of a surprise um, because you look at the um, four sixes, it, it looks at a lot of parity, it looks at a lot of opportunities to be successful. Um, I mean, it looks at it there... It's a lot of parity, but when I look at the divisions this year, um, I feel like there's a lot of parity in the red. I think the red is a tough, it's a trap, it's a mindset trap, basically, whereas um, you're virtually going to be, you you got to show up and play every single night. You know, and that's understandable. All these teams have got to play every night, show up and play every night, because you don't know what's going to happen. Um, and then you got to look at, but I feel like the red is probably one of the most kiss of death leagues in the, in the um, entire state. Um, of course, Harrison's got a nightmare of a schedule looking at their, at their slate early in the year. Um, of course, Latham's got a tough schedule. Adams has a tough schedule. Clarkson's got an interesting schedule, you know, but, um, you know, but schedule's going to get you better for the district tournament. Of course, um, that's going to be coming up in March. Um, and of course, I feel like the red and the white this year are more balanced than in years past. Um. In the blue, of course, I feel like it's a um, one-team race. And in the goal, I feel like it's a two-team race. Um, when you look at some of the talent in the um, in the, in the the league this year, you got some emerging stars. You got some established stars. Of course, a lot of people look at in the red, of course, you got um, at Harrison. You got um, you got um, Kyler Rowland, Amber Steffens, and um, Kristen Nelson over there. Later, we got the Bellow Twins. I'm not throwing Antoinette Miller. You know, they got Deja Church is a very good player. And also, and of course, Adams, of course, they're the new girls in the block coming in from the white to the red, of course. They did get a new coach, though, and Shy Lewis. Shy Lewis, of course, played her girls' basketball under France Wothich at Adams. And um, she ended up having a very good career over at um, Wayne State. And um, she comes back, takes over the reins at, at Rochester Adams, of course. Um, they just got stronger, of course. Mentioned last week when they ended up getting the um, when up getting Deja Dinkins from um, West Bloomfield, and um, talked about how that how that's going to make Adams a much better team. And of course, you got Clarkson, of course, with them. Of course, you got Erica Davenport. You got Kayla Illusion back. I've known her when she was a thrower. I mean, like you know, when she was a shot putter. Adam, you know, I went up against her. She's a good player. She's a good athlete. I mean. But the question I have is that guard spot for Clarkston. I mean, like, I'm not sold on Ashley Skaggs as one of their guards. I'm not sold on them. A couple of those girls at the guard spot. Of course, Stony Creek, of course, Brad Crichton. Um, of course, um, he, um, he, he's got a good guard back in Maria Zandi, Courtney Sullick, and um, Carly Campbell. Those three girls, I think, are going to be, are going to keep Stony Creek, um, I think, competitive this year. And, of course, North Farmington, new coach, and Skip Sheffield. Um, Got Megan Carter. I mean, it'd be very interesting to look at. And of course, you know, in the white, you got some star players as well. You got um, at Oxford, of course, you got Jessica Murphy, Sherilyn Bandis, um, Samantha Maseki, Grace Wysocki, and Sky Donaldson. You know, I feel a lot of people look at Jessica Murphy as his top star. Yeah, she's a top star, but um, you know, but um, I look at it, but I look at Oxford. The question for them is gonna be their bench heading into the year. But we'll go over. Team by team previews. I mean, like shortly, of course, you got Ori, and of course, you got Evelyn Wishmeyer, Hannah Hame. Um, those two girls are going to be, I think, the key to the Dragon season this year. Um, you got Avondale, who um, very good for 
coming up. I mean, you got Darius Whiteside as one of the, one of the premier coaches um, in there. And I think when you look at Abbott, it'll surprise some people. Of course, they they got some experience coming back. Um, True Bloomfield Hills, of course, um, they lost Shannon Wilson. Um, you know, so there's gonna be a huge question who gets her points. You know, you got Catlin Prenna, who who was a freshman last year, who's gonna be up, and you got Amanda Moss, who um, she's a spotty player. I think um, she'll be our. I mean, she's she's an up and down player. I mean, like, but but that's the key for Jeff Rubin's team is gonna be is how that those guards are gonna rise up. You got Jubby Jackson, who's also a um, gonna work at the three got spot. Of course, you got Victory Franklin, of course, coming up from from. The um, sophomore from the JV level last year to the varsity, you know, I expect she's going to be a very good player up in the um, up in the interior this year. I expect her to do well for Bloomfield Hills, and also you got Troy, of course. Um, you got um for um for Sam Bato and his Colt team. They're going to be relying a lot on Rachel Grecky. Um, Grecky, you know, I do have some questions about her maturity. Um, but um. But but when she um but you know when she's when she's maturing on her game I think she's gonna be she's a very talented player she can shoot from the outside three point shot, um, but you know but um, but the question's gonna be inside for Troy um that's gonna be the question there and then West Bloomfield of course you know the loss of Dinkins I think hurts his team a lot that's gonna be relying a lot on Taylor Pierce and um Rachel Harnish I mean that's something that Troy's gonna have to rely on heading into the year. Um, um, West Bloomfield is gonna ha- rely on hanging the air correction. Um, with um, for Jer- for um Matt Hilbers' team. Um, it's gonna be an interesting year to look at for the Lakers, especially because they open up with Clarkston. That's gonna be a very very tough game right there, heading into that slate. And then um, and when you look at the blue course, you got Seahome. Of course, a lot of hype surrounding Mackenzie Harbot, especially with she competing that three point challenge up in East Lansing. Um. You know, she's a very good three-point shooter. You know, I mean, she's a good penetrator. She can, I mean, like, but um, the key, I think, for her is her defense. Um, I just haven't been sold on her defense. Um, and when I saw the film on her, on Seahome, you know, I saw some a lot of film on Seahome, and um, I just have not been sold on um, Harbaugh as a defender. You know, she's got all the offensive talent in the world. Seahome's got some good defensive stoppers. They do. But the question's going to be is can Mackenzie Harbot become a defender? And I don't know. I mean, you got Oak Park over there, of course. They're Oak Park, very interesting team, of course. This is the, um, I think it's the third year for Diane Jones over there at Night Valley. Um, she's got some talent over there. Um, but with Oak Park, of course, um, you know, they got some questions in the interior, but they got a very solid guard. Um, I think that Oak Park's going to be. Oak Park will surprise some people this year. Um, <coughs> of course, Royal Oak, of course, under Brian Spada. Of course, I'm um, led by Allison Karpinski and um, Bailey Heron. Um, there are two guards. Um, the question is going to be for them the inside. Um, they lost a lot of talent last year in the interior. Um, but I feel like they have those two guards. They're going to be very, very talented. Um, Bailey Heron's a three-point shooter. She's a very, very on-snap three-pointer. Point shooter. I just think when you look at Royal Oak, um, they're going to be relying a lot on those two girls this year. Um, and the next team is Farmington. Of course, they got a new coach. Um, I know placing Dave Brown over at Milford. I've been hearing the AD over there at Farmington as the head coach, and um, I think she's a good fit for him because um, when you look at it, she's got the passion. She's got the integ- She's got the passion, the fire, the desire. I think to lead Farmington basketball. And, um, you know, they got the three guards to do it. Maddie Trevison, Amari Eccles, and um, Maya Dallas, of course. Dallas, of course, she's a diaper. She's a shoot three-point shooting diaper dandy along with them, um, along with Eccles. And uh, Eccles can play, the sm- can play the small forward spot. And, of course, got Maddie Trevison, who is a very good guard. Um, so I expect a lot of expectation over at Farmington to do well this year. Of course, Rochester's the next team. Um, they got Joel Schultz. The question for Rochester is D.A.B. Jackson if she comes out and comes back and plays because, like, when Jackson played, she, Rochester had another element to their game. But now you look at a team like um, but now, but now when you look at Rochester, um, no doubt the Falcons, I think, are going to have some struggles 
heading into the year. I mean, it'll be a tough year, another tough year for Adam Sheldon and his crew. And the last team in the Blues, Groves. When you look at Groves, um, the Falcons, they struggled last year in the white really badly. Um, it was a tough year for Amos Thompson and his staff. Um, the Lakers were perhaps one of the most. No, the Falcons were, even though they beat Farmington last year, you know, but um, Farmington, of course, um, Groves is Groves lost a lot of talent last year, and um, I expect them to struggle again this year. It would not surprise me if they struggle again this year. And the last division we're going to mention is the gold. Of course, um, when you look at Berkeley's got some talent coming back. Um, they got, I mean, like they did, they did get some key pieces back from a team that was very, very good. Um, I expect them to do well this year. Um, the next team up is Troy Athens. Of course, um, they do have some questions. I mean, like when you look at the Red Hawks, um, they're going to be better than people think, but a lot of people I talk to say, why is Troy Athens still up down in the gold? You know, I mean, yeah, their basketball program has struggled the last um, two seasons, but, you know, when you look at Troy Athens, they're a big school. They got some big, I mean, they got some kids, you know what I mean? I mean, why are they still in the blue? And Why are they in the gold? And, you know, I don't know what to say to them. And it's just, you know, if Troy Athens this year can prove to them that they can win in this league, I think that Troy could be a uh, Troy Athens could be a very very interesting team to watch. Next team here is Ferndale. The Eagles um lost a lot of talent, but um but when you look at Ferndale, it's going to be a very unique situation, especially with them. Um, with the Eagles, I mean like um they're in Class B. They have a favorable district every year. Of course, they're likely going to be dealing with Detroit Country Day later in the playoffs. But we'll see what happens over there. Next team is Southfield. Of course, the Blue Jays is going to be a very unique team to watch. They're known for their speed. They got Christy Lindefoe, who I think is a very good player. Um, but we'll see what happens with Southfield. Hazel Park, of course, I don't expect them to do much. You know what I mean? But um, And also Pontiac. It, it, last year for Pontiac it was a tough year for Lance Davis and his team. Um, it was unfortunate for that situation over there. That they were in the red and they it, they were in the red last year and everyone was just killing them by 40, 50 points. It was just unfortunate. And Lance Davis, one of the best coaches in the um, entire state, and it's been unfortunate to see his team t struggle the way they've been in the last few years and um, vice versa. Um, when I look at my favorites early on. Um, in the gold, I got Berkeley winning the gold. I think Berkeley because they got a lot of talent back. Um, Troy Athens, my number two spot um, in that division. Ferndale's my number three three spot. Southfield's my number four. Hazel Park is my number five. And Pontiac is my number six. In the blue, I think Seaholm runs away with that division. Oak Park two, Royal Oak three, Farmington four, Rochester five, and Grove six. Um, and then, of course, Looking at the white, I think the white could go either way when you look at these next them. Um, I think five of the I think that um Orion and Oxford are gonna be very, very close with each other during during the rest of the season. Um, along with Avondale. Avondale's your dark horse along with Boompy Hills and Troy. <laughs> but early on I got Oxford one, Orion two, Avondale three, Bloomby Hills four, Troy five, West Bloomfield six. Um you know, and that, that's something here. I think when you look at it here um, with Oxford, this is really it for that program. Their program, I've been hearing, is struggling next year. They lose a lot of talent next year on that team. And then, of course, in the Vaunted Red, I got Harrison 1, Latham 2, Adams 3, Clarkson 4, Stony Creek 5, and North Farmington 6, which, that, which you know, would not surprise me in that division that – any team's going to be above 500, you know, any team above 500 is going to make the play is, um, is going to do some damage in the, in districts. Of course, um, a lot of people around the state, of course, um, talking to me about how good Birmingham Marion is going to be. They're going to be good. They're going to be very good. You know, they got a lot of talent back. They got the Thomas sisters back. They got a couple others that are very, very good back. Um, you know, and of course, a lot of the OA teams, you know, Harrison's in that district, Bloomby Hill's in that district. 
see homes in that district. I mean, like, so I expect them to be some very good basketball come in March. And Harrison, I think, has got one of the most vicious schedules I've seen in a long time. You know what I mean? And it'll be a tough test, I think, for Coach Tim Micklash and his Falcon team heading into the year, heading into that campaign. All right, now when we come back, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about more girls basketball, of course, the unveiling of the Dragon's Den Top 10 for, the, for girls basketball here on OA Now. Prescription drug abuse is a national epidemic. The new in way to obtain drugs is through parents' or grandparents' medicine chests. Removing prescriptions from your cabinet is the best way to keep drugs out of the hands of our young people. We've got to work together to protect our teens, our seniors, and our environment. Clean out your medicine cabinet today. Please participate in Operation Medicine Cabinet and drop off your unwanted or expired prescriptions at one of our law enforcement drop-off sites in Oakland County. We can't ignore this situation anymore. Welcome back to Only Now. I'm Sam Tamina, blogger of the Dragon's Den, and one of the hosts of Between Terminas here on ONTV. Of course, um, I'd like to thank um, ONTV for being here for today's um, coverage and, um, of OA Now. And, of course, we're going to go over my top 24 teams for girls basketball, of course. I mentioned, like, teens, my projections, of course. Um, but my here's my Dragon's Den top 20 um, for, for the OAA, of course, um, Mentioned some of these teams earlier, of course. Number two, I'm gonna go from 24 to one. Um, to start off here. My 24 ranked team is the Pontiac Phoenix. Of course, we all know about Lance Davis is a mess over there at Pontiac. Um, they could struggle again this year. Um, when looking at the Phoenix, 23, I got Hazel Park. Um, like I said, same situation as Pontiac. I think when you look at Hazel Park, um, you know the question is gonna be is who. With the Vikings is going to be, can they develop the interior? Can they develop the guard play? It's going to be an interesting year to looking at Hazel Park. Um, 22, I got um, is Groves. Of course, the Falcons had a very long year last year in the white, you know, but um, now they're down in the blue. I'm expecting a struggle again this year, heading into the year um, in that one. <laughs> Number 21 is Southfield, of course. Um, when you look at the Blue Jays, um, Southfield, very, very unique to watch. Um, very, you know, they're going to pass some speed. They're going to have some talent. Um, but the question is going to be how is it going to be, how will this year's team get them ready for division play, for district play? You know, they're in that very tough district with them. Farmington Hills Mercy in there, you know, so that's not going to be an easy district to get out of. Um, number 19, of course, is Rochester, the Falcons, you know. Of course, it's going to be, when I look at Rochester, of course, Phil Schultz is um, the key for the Falcons. He's a good, I mean, like, she, I mean, like, um, they had a really rough year last year. I think that second year is going to really help them. Phil Schultz over there at Rochester. Um, but the question is going to be um, for the Falcons is, can the Falcons basically say is, um, can the Falcons develop their, um, their, um, Chemistry, you know what I mean? That's going to be the question over there, Rochester. I forgot to mention number 20, of course, is Ferndale, the Eagles. Um, Ferndale is a very unique team to look at, of course. They um, had a loss, a lot of talent from a year ago, you know, so it could be a long year over there at Ferndale heading into the year. Um, when looking at Ferndale, I just think that the Eagles are going to be a very unique team to watch, especially because I got them ranked third right now in the um, gold behind them. Um, be in the gold behind them, um, Berkeley and Troy Athens. I mean, like, I think Berkeley and Troy Athens are going to be better than people think this year. I mean, speaking of 18, I have, to have Troy Athens at number 18. Um, the Red Hawks had a better, they're going to be much I think they're going to be an improved team this year. Um, it w wouldn't surprise me if Troy Athens makes a run. You know, I mean, the schedule's still dawning. They still got to play Troy in the season. Um, I think they play him twice, and, um, both mat games, I think that's going to be bad matchups for um Troy Athens against Troy. I mean, like, um, because I don't think they match up well with Rachel Grecky at all when they play the Colts. Um, I got Troy Athens at number 18 in the Dragons' Den poll. Um, number 17 is Farmington, of course. New coach, new um, new system over there. I just think when you look at Farmington, um, 
you know, they got they got three good players, very good players. The question can be their interior. If they get develop the interior, I think Farmington's gonna go places this year. Um next team to mention here is um number um we're on number sixteen, which is the Lakers of West Bloomfield. Of course, Lakers took a huge hit when they lost Asia Jenkins, who transferred out of the district to Rochester Adams. And um, I think losing Dinkins is going to hurt this team. They still got some two key pieces in Taylor Pierce and um, Rachel Harnish. But if West if Dinkins would have stayed at West Bloomfield, I think West Bloomfield would have been ranked higher in my den poll. But also got to look at the future next year for West Bloomfield. They got two very good players coming up to um, if they stay at West Bloomfield. Because I've been hearing a lot of talk about them possibly going to Birmingham Marion. But, um, but, um. I, if they stay at West Bloomfield, then I think Matt Hilbert is going to have a very, very good campaign next year. Um, number um, 15 is Troy, the Colts. Um, they did lose a lot last year in Rachel Zamansky and Sydney Heath, you know, but they still got Rachel Grecky back. You know, the key, the question for them is the interior, especially can the play, can the play, of course, of the interior game. I've been hearing. A lot about Jordan Lafayette. Um, I mean, like I've been hearing a lot about her. You know what she brings. She's a good player. She's a um, she's a player that can develop into a very very tall diaper dandy player. I think that um, when you look at if if she the key for Troy is going to be her production. If she gets at at least 15, 10, 12 points a game, that's going to make Rachel Grecky's life easier, and uh, so that's going to make the rest of the team's life easier. And also got the emergence of Diana Hosley. Oh wait, I'm thinking about them. Oh well. Um, but um, but um, but also got the emergence over there at Troy. I think the Colts are gonna be a team to watch this year, no doubt about it. Um, number four teams, Royal Oak. I got the Ravens, of course. Brian Spada, you know his team, but Allison Karpinski and um Bailey Horan. I think those two girls are gonna be key heading into the year. Um, when you look at Troy, I just when you look at Royal Oak, I mean like. The schedule's pretty manageable, but you still got to play Oak Park. You got to play Seaholm. You got to play Farmington. You know what I mean? Those four, it would not surprise me. Those four teams, they virtually just destroy one another heading into the um, heading into that play, heading into league play later on in the year. And also, it could be an impact in districts. Of course, they're in that vaunted, they're at Southfield later, but everybody knows who's the favorite there is, fortunately. But it is what it is. <laughs> Number 13 is Oak Park. The Knights, of course, Diane Jones. Um, her team's, I think, is very talented. Um, but we'll see what happens over at Oak Park, of course. Um, I, Oak Park, it's Diane. Diane Joan gets the best out of players. Um, I think. I think that um, her, her third year, I think she's going to develop Oak Park into like a. Um, they're going to be up there this year, especially. I mean, like they moved up. You know what I mean? But we'll just see what happens. They gave Seaholm a, a good game, a couple, good, two good games last year. So we'll see with Oak Park. I think it's going to be a. Um, Interesting team to look at heading into the year. Um, number 12 is Bloompy Hills, the Blackhawks. Yes, they lost Shannon Wilson a year ago. But when you look at the Blackhawks, um, Bloompy Hills, of course, they got Amanda Moss, Kathleen Prina. Haven't talked about this freshman moving up, who I'm here is very, very good. And then, of course, you got Victory Franklin on the um, up in the interior. Also, you got um, you got some good players on that team. Um, but... Um, when you look at Bloomby Hills, I think, you know, I th- where are they going to replace Wilson's pr- point production? That's going to be the question. You got a lot of players ready to step up, but there's some questions in Jeff Rubin's system. How um, how are they going to replace that production? And that question is, I can't give you an answer right there. I can't explain it. Number 11 I got is Berkeley. Um, Berkeley Bears, very unique team to look at, especially because they returned a lot of talent. Of course, um. <laughs> They have one of those. They had a big win last year when they knocked off Birmingham Seaholm. They returned a lot of experience. They got a lot of talent back. I mean, like when you look at Berkeley, it's going to be a unique team. I think for um for the Bears, I think it'll be an interesting year over there at Berkeley. Um, and now into my Dragons Den top ten for girls basketball. Of course, um, <laughs> I'm going to go with number ten. That's Auburn Hills Avondale. Of course, I expect Avondale to be a dark horse this year. In the white, I mean, like, when you look at the Yellow Jackets, they were in the red last year. Very good four, solid four. Um, you know, I think that that, um, I think playing in the white is going to help them this year, especially because not a lot of these teams know who Avondale is. Probably the only exception is West Bloomfield. But 
It's going to take a while. I think, you know, when you're looking at this at this league, I think it's going to be an interesting. It's, I think Abadale, for Darius Whiteside and his team, I think they're in a good situation this year when you look at it, if you're a yellow jacket. You know, the schedule has been interesting, but with Abadale, you know, we'll see what happens. Number nine, of course, I got North Farmington. First year, Coach gets Sheffield, um has Megan Carter back. I mean, like, but the problem I look at for North Farmington, how is this team going to gel? Early into the year, of course, um, you know, Tim Carrada's coached at North Farns for a long time. He was one of the best coaches in the entire state. And now he um he's taking he's moving on, focusing his role as athletic director. Um, you know, but um when you look at North Farmington, it's gonna be a very unique situation over there. I just think that North Farmington's going to turn the corner. I think that the Raiders it could be a very interesting league season, but you know, I think the the non conference wins will take care of itself. Early on, of course, number eight is Stony Creek, the Cougars. Um, when you look at the Cougars, Stony Creek, they, um, of course, they got a three-headed monster. Of course, led by Maria Zandy. Zandy was a very good player last year for Stony Creek. Of course, um, you got um, you got Courtney Sullock and Carly Campbell. Those two girls, of course, I remember when they did the Lake Orion last year. That was just completely mind-boggling when you look at that game with what um, Sullock and Campbell did in that one. Stony Creek's going to have a bench, good bench this year. I mean, like, I expect Brad Crichton to have his teams um, competing and competing at a high level. But when you look at it here, it could be very interesting to look at heading into the year. Number seven is Seaholm. The Maples, of course, very unique team. Of course, led by Mackenzie Harbot. They got a, they got a couple good defensive stoppers. Seaholm's going to be a team to watch heading into the year. I mean, like, I expect to see him get a lot of press, a lot of hype. And, of course, we all know what Mackenzie Harbaugh did last year against Bloomfield Hills. Don't think the Blackhawks have forgotten when she put up 35 points against them. And that was just insane over there at Birmingham Marion last year. I mean, forgot to mention that. And um, <laughs> I expect Harbaugh to do very, very well this year to in the Maple, in the Maple Forest. You know, I think it's going to be an interesting year for the Maples looking at that team. Of course, number six is Orion. Of course, the Dragons. They lose two players in Nicole Cryer and um, Melanie Gagan, but you got Hannah Hame, you got Evelyn Wishmeyer. I think those two girls are going to make a huge step. And um, also, the key, I think, for this team is going to be the outside shooting and also the production of Delaney Hahn. If Delaney Hahn is on our game, expect this team to do some damage. If not, Lake Orion's going to have issues all season long looking at that spot. But um, they got a deep bench, they're talented. I mean, like, this is one of Steve Roberts' um, best, deep, most deepest teams in a long, long time. And that's saying something, of course, especially when you look at that group coming in next year. Good Lord. And then number five, of course, the Oxford Wildcats. You know, Steve Emmert's Wildcats, of course. Um, you got Jessica Murphy's very, very good. You got um, Sherilyn Bandis. You got um, – but the question for Oxford is – when if a girl like Murphy gets in foul trouble, if a girl like um Bandis gets in foul trouble, you got the Bukovic sisters, you're virtually going seven deep. That's not good. You know what I mean? If you're going seven deep. And of course, you know, the um longtime health of this program I know over at Oxford and here is not very good. But, you know, we'll see what happens over there at Oxford. Of course, um a lot of unspeculation rumors going around over there at that at Oxford. Number four is Clarkson, of course, Tim Wazlick's Wolves, of course. Led by Erica Davenport, of course, Davenport going to Marquette. Um, when you look at the Wolves, I think that um, the keys are guards. Ashley Skaggs, one of them. Um, I think, um, but also the emergence of um, Kayla Lugenback, of course. I told you about Lugenback, of course, having to go up against her in shot put and track at Scripps. Um, it's a unique, interesting um, scenario with Clarkson. If Clarkson has to rely a lot on Davenport, that's not going to be a good omen. But if they got to get a Robin right in there for um for Davenport last year was Casey Robinson, I'm not sure who who's gonna be the um, the Robin to Davenport's Batman. Number three is Adams, of course. New coach Shy Lewis, of course, has got a very dangerous team back. I mean, like you look at Adams's team, you got um your starting point guard is Deja Dinkins. Your two guard is Ryan is Raven Owusu. Your three is Ryan Owusu. Your four is Olivia Aragos, and your five is Amber Jameson. Jameson's going to Northwestern. I mean, like, and then you got a deep bench. I mean, Adams is loaded this year. They're going to be stacked. They got Their long-term health is good. 
like Lake Orion's and Adams, I feel like those two teams are the best best two teams when it comes to long stability along with Stony Creek. Um, but, um, you know, but um, they also got Clarkson in there, you know, I mean, the long-term stability there as well. But I feel like right now that my top four teams, long-term stability is Adams, or as Orion one, Adams two, Stony Creek three, and um, and um, when I look at um, and of course um, but right now I think those right now are the top three teams in my opinion of long term stability. When you look at like the program level, you know, at a program health right now, basically. Number two, of course, is Safia Lathrop. The the Chargers, led by of course Michelle Jackson Marshall, um. You look at the Chargers. Um, they got a very good. Um, they got Paige Bello, Paige Bello, Ty Bello, Antoinette Miller, and Deja Church. I think Church is going to be a huge addition. Church is going to be huge at that guard spot. Of course, I'm not selling Antoinette Miller, but he got the Bellows. I think it make up for it. And um, I think they expect the Bellows to have a huge, huge year this year for the um, for the Chargers. And of course, my number one ranked team is the um, Farmingdale's Harrison Hawks. Tim McLash has got a very good team. You got Katie Conrad back. You got um Kyler Rowland, Amber Steffens, Kristen Nelson, those three big three. Their schedule is absolutely demanding, is is an understatement. They gotta play. They open up the year with Lavonia Stevenson. It was one who was a 15 and 8 team last year. And then you gotta go to Ann Arbor Huron. That's not gonna be an easy game. I know Clarkson still gotta play Ann Arbor Huron early in the year as well. And then of course, um, Heading into that one, I think Harrison's got one of the most vicious schedules in the state, you know. But I mean, like, of course, Tim McLash always mentions you got to play the best to beat the best, you know. So that is the top ten for the um, top twenty-four for the Dragons Den for girls basketball. Of course, um, wish everybody the best of luck in girls basketball this year. Um, everybody in the league, of course, um, of course, any um, any thoughts and concerns, you feel free to talk to me on my Twitter page. I'm at Saginaw Bay. And um, we'll see what happens this year, um, heading into the year. All right, everybody, I'm going to sign off here for OA Now. I'm Sammy Termina, signing off. OAA Now is produced at Orion Neighborhood Television, Lake Orion's community media outlet. To learn more about ON TV, visit our website at www.orionontv.org or call us at 248-393-1060.